This is VOA News. I'm Tommy McNeil. U.S. President Donald Trump is calling the new trade deal with Canada and Mexico the biggest trade deal in U.S. history to help protect U.S. workers. The agreement reached late Sunday will replace the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. So we have negotiated this new agreement based on the principle of fairness and reciprocity. To me, it's the most important word in trade because we've been treated so unfairly by so many nations all over the world that we're changing that. Uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says a North American trade deal simply needed to be fair. It would have to preserve the fundamental principle of the original agreement, which is that when your trading partner is 10 times your size, you need rules. You need a level playing field. Mr. Trump had criticized NAFTA during his 2016 election campaign, calling it the worst trade deal in history. He blamed it for the loss of American manufacturing jobs. The U.S. Congress is likely to act on the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement next year. Search and rescue teams continue to recover bodies and search for survivors following Friday's earthquake and tsunami in Indonesia's Sulawesi region. Officials fear the death toll could climb into the thousands. Right now, at least 844 deaths are confirmed. The airport is barely functioning, and most power plants have been knocked offline. Roads are shattered and twisted. National Disaster Management spokesperson Pervo Nugroho said several areas need assistance. That includes air transportation, tents for refugees, water treatment, generator sets, field hospitals, and medical personnel. This is VOA News. Senior Trump administration officials insist the White House is not micromanaging a new FBI background check as Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. This comes as Supreme Court begins its fall term. Meanwhile, President Trump is reacting to how much Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh talked about beer while testifying last week. AP Washington correspondent Sankar Magani. I liked beer. Several times during his Senate hearing, Kavanaugh referenced having beers with friends, sometimes too many. I still like beer. I was surprised at how uh, vocal he was about the fact that he likes beer, and he's had a little bit of difficulty. The president says it's not something he's had to worry about since he's not a drinker. It's one of my only good traits saying he's never had a beer or any other alcohol can you imagine if i had what a mess i'd be would i be the i'd be the world's worst sagar magani washington las vegas held several memorial services to mark the one-year anniversary since a gunman opened fire on a crowd during a country music festival killing 58 and wounding more than 800. voa's carolyn prosciutti tells us much has changed since the including or since then, including the hotel where the shooting occurred. Mandalay Bay has renumbered its floors to eliminate Paddock's 32nd floor, and his suite will never be rented to tourists. Sidewalks are lined with barriers to prevent vehicles from ramming into crowds. Restaurants also felt the pain. Ricky and Jen Ruff serve up Filipino food in the shadow of the Mandalay. Business here dropped probably around 20%. And uh, it dropped because people just went in the morning. The same with James Ramos's real estate deals. It drastically affected the tourism that was coming into town. But both businesses have since rebounded. The 58 crosses have moved from the grass at the beginning of the strip to a spot next to 58 portraits of the victims, each painted by a different artist. Both memorials are breathtaking in magnitude, in a city still working to heal and find hope. That's VOA's Carolyn Pursuti reporting. A week after China recalled its naval chief from a planned U.S. visit, denied Hong Kong a port visit from a U.S. naval warship, And after its defense secretary could not be made available, the Pentagon canceled plans for U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis to visit China. Tensions are also high over U.S. President Trump's authorization of a $1.3 billion arms sales sale to Taiwan, which Beijing considers a renegade province, and Mr. Trump's sanctions for Beijing's recent purchase of Russian military equipment. I'm Tommy McNeil, BOA News.